Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Sri Lanka is an island nation off the southeast coast of India. The former British colony gained its independence early, and the economy of more than 20 million highly literate people has long been actively engaged in what is called economic development policies. I wanted to report one of their particular global warming or green policies that ended up toppling the government. But what I found as I looked deeper was a so-called democratic socialist government that could be described as a type of role model for the United States. Back in 2022, the Sri Lankan government imposed an organic agriculture policy, removing the subsidy for chemical fertilizers and effectively stifling farmers' access to agricultural fertilizers and chemicals. The rather rash policy implementation caused a breakdown of Sri Lanka's key economic sector, farmers who make up more than a quarter of the population, experienced a dramatic drop in incomes as crops failed and production plummeted. Related sectors were negatively impacted. Food prices skyrocketed. Protests spread across the country, and the government was effectively toppled. The point I was going to make was that policies that claim to address climate change have negative impacts on the prime ingredients of human life, like food and energy. They cause impoverishment and death and are disruptive to human society and human flourishing and can therefore be politically destabilizing. Now, I have done a little research on Sri Lanka in the past about the positive economic benefits of good economic liberalization policies. However, as I reviewed the country's economic policies and conditions, what struck me is how similar the U.S.'s policy is today to Sri Lanka's longer-run path of its democrat socialist government. It turns out, for example, that the fertilizer policy change was less about climate change and more about the debt crisis, budget crisis, and currency reserve crisis that the government had burdened the country with. The government had accumulated a huge amount of foreign debt over the years. Some of it was for economic development, but they also borrowed money just to pay ongoing expenses. And like most foreign economic development lending, by the likes of the IMF, China, and the big banks, the development benefits are more like wishful thinking, and the results are often dependency and ruination, like borrowing from a loan shark. The government has even found itself in situations where it took more than 80% of total tax revenues to cover the interest expense on loans. Its government debt is now greater than the economy's GDP, effectively mortgaging the country's future without much productive investment to make the payments. The government has continued to carry the cost of a large bureaucracy and social programs and used foreign loans for economic development. The proper approach would be to trim expenses and government paychecks to pay for tax cuts and tax breaks for increased savings and investment, both foreign and domestic. Of course, this is just what the U.S. government has been doing. Massive increases in government spending and government debts, much of it to foreigners, and a willingness to pay for ongoing bureaucratic expenses with budget deficits and, of course, a tidal wave of interest payments on the national debt. The U.S. now has a government debt-to-GDP, or the size of the total economy, that is now 123%, which is actually greater than Sri Lanka's. In fact, anything over 100% is very troublesome on the fast track to ruination. U.S. government interest payments on its debt were $658 billion last year, 
and will be $892 billion this year. In our future, the government's interest payments will skyrocket. Adjusted for the impact of inflation over time, our government's interest payments have averaged about $250 billion over my life. But in 10 years' time, they are expected to be $1.7 trillion per year if everything goes as well as expected. I will end by noting that the American colonies and Sri Lanka, then known as Ceylon, were the first to achieve self-determination in their respective regions. Economist Ludwig von Mises, writing in the 1920s, considered self-determination to be a prime political virtue. However, both countries have effectively squelched self-determination inside their countries. And this is likely the reason, combined of course with economic problems, why both countries have experienced increasing internal dissension.